He said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. Now don't be grieved that you sold me here, for God sent me before you to preserve life. Genesis 45, 4 through 5. Dear God, thank you that even when bad things happen, you can make good come out of them. As we read the Bible story of Joseph's happy ending, help us to listen and understand that we can always trust you because you love us so much. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you for praying with us today. The Kids Bible in a Year podcast is sponsored by Little Passports, delivering monthly activity kit subscriptions that help kids explore the world, cultivate curiosity, and discover new interests with hands-on crafts and activities in cooking, science, crafts, and more, all with a unique cultural twist. Visit littlepassports.com blessed to learn more and save 20% with code blessed. Joseph reunited with his family. Before this story, we learned about how Joseph hid his cup in Benjamin's sack to test his brothers. Now we will learn about how Joseph reveals himself and is reunited with his whole family, inspired by the book of Genesis. Hey, it's me, Julia, and welcome to the Kids Bible in a Year podcast. I'm so glad you're here. Today we get to hear the Bible story of how Joseph was reunited with his family and Israel came down to Egypt with all his household to settle there in Goshen. How did it happen? Let's find out together. After Judah pleaded with Joseph about Benjamin, Joseph sent everyone away from him so that he could be alone with his brothers. He needed to tell them who he was. He was so emotional that he cried so loudly that the Egyptians heard him and Pharaoh's household heard about it. Joseph said to his brothers, It's me. I'm Joseph, your brother. Is my father still alive? But his brothers did not answer him. They were scared of what Joseph was going to do to them. Joseph asked them to come closer and repeated, It's me. I'm Joseph, your brother. I'm the one you sold into Egypt. He told his brothers not to be mad at themselves because God had sent him to Egypt to save the lives of many people. For two years, there had been almost no food to eat. People were dying, and there were going to be five more years of famine. But God sent Joseph to Egypt before his brothers to save their lives. Joseph said to his brothers, Go back and get my father. Tell him that God has made me Lord over all of Egypt and to come to see me. Say to him, You can live in a place called Goshen and be close to Joseph, you, your children, and all of your animals. Tell him about the honor that has been given to me in Egypt and about everything you have seen. When Pharaoh heard that Joseph's brothers had come, Pharaoh and all of his officials were thrilled. Pharaoh said to Joseph, Tell your brothers to load up their animals and go back to Canaan and bring your father and family back to me. I will give you the best of everything in Egypt. Joseph's brothers were also told to take some carts from Egypt for the children and wives to ride back on. Joseph gave his brothers the carts, as Pharaoh had commanded, as well as food and supplies for the journey. He gave his brothers new clothes, but to Benjamin, Joseph gave 300 pieces of silver and five sets of clothes. He sent his father 20 donkeys, loaded with the best things from Egypt, and with grain and bread. So Joseph's brothers left Egypt and went to their father. They told him, Joseph is still alive, and he is the ruler of all Egypt. He couldn't believe what he was hearing. But as his sons continued talking about all that Joseph told them, and when he saw the carts that Joseph sent, he believed them. He said to his sons, I've heard enough. My son Joseph is alive, 
and I have to go see him before I die. So Jacob and his sons began to travel back to Egypt with all that belonged to them. When they reached a place called Beersheba, Jacob offered sacrifices to God. God spoke to Jacob, saying, Jacob, Jacob, here I am, Jacob replied. I am God. Do not be scared to go to Egypt. I will go with you, and I will bring you back again. Then Jacob left Beersheba and went to Egypt, taking all of his animals and possessions. Jacob brought all of his family with him to Egypt, his sons, grandsons, daughters, granddaughters, everyone. In total, 66 people traveled to Egypt with Jacob. Counting Joseph's two sons, 70 members of Jacob's family were in Egypt. Jacob sent Judah to get directions to Goshen from Joseph. When they arrived there, Joseph went to meet his father. As soon as Joseph saw his father, he gave him a big hug and cried for a long time. Jacob said to Joseph, Now I can die happy, because I have seen for myself that you are still alive. Then Joseph said to his brothers, and all that was with Jacob, I will speak to the Pharaoh and tell him that you are shepherds. I will tell him that you have brought your livestock with you to Egypt. When Pharaoh calls you in to ask what kind of work you do, tell him that you have watched after livestock since you were a boy. Then he will let you live here in Goshen, because all Egyptians look down on shepherds. I just love a happy ending, don't you? Now for a very long time, it didn't seem like Joseph's story would have had a happy ending at all. In fact, when Joseph told his brothers, it's me, your brother Joseph, they were scared. They had sinned by throwing him in a pit and selling him as a slave. If Joseph had thrown them all in prison right then, they knew they deserved it. But even though his brothers had hurt him, Joseph couldn't stop loving them. And he told them, What you meant for evil, God has turned to good. He sent me to Egypt ahead of you, so that many lives would be saved. Do you know that even when you and I hurt God, He still loves us? And just like God took the sad, broken parts of Joseph's life and turned them into a happy ending, He can do the same with our lives too. You see, even though Joseph couldn't understand what was happening when it happened, God had everything under control. He was working even the bad parts out for good because God had never abandoned his plan to fix his broken creation, and he never will. And because Joseph understood that, he could forgive his brothers. That made them very happy. But do you know who was even more happy than Joseph's brothers? That's right, his father, Israel. And when Israel heard that Joseph was still alive and that he was second in command over all of Egypt and that he was giving Israel a beautiful land for his whole household to live in, his sons and daughters and grandchildren and great-grandchildren and goats and sheep and horses and donkeys and probably a couple of dogs and house cats too, Jacob could hardly believe it. God had been so good to him. And when Israel came to Egypt and Israel and Joseph finally saw each other, they cried happy tears and hugged for a long time. It was a very happy ending. God loves happy endings too. And he promised that one day, every one of us who loves him will enjoy the happiest of all happy endings. There will be no more pain or tears or crying. Everything sad will be washed away and forgotten. There will only be happy tears and hugs like Joseph and Jacob because nothing will ever separate us from God again. We will live with God forever in his big, beautiful, happy home. And when God makes a promise, he keeps it. 
Our next story begins with another promise from God. As Jacob traveled to Egypt to see Joseph, God spoke to him at a place called Beersheba. Jacob worshiped God there, thanking him for everything he had done. And God said, I am God, the God of your father. Don't be afraid to go down into Egypt, for there I will make of you a great nation. I will go down with you into Egypt. I will also surely bring you up again. What do you think that means? We'll find out next time when we learn about a very special baby born almost 400 years after Jacob's family settled in Egypt. I'm so glad you joined me for today's story. Remember, the Bible is the best story ever told, and it's all true. If you like this podcast, subscribe to it so you get the latest episodes as they are released. Kids Bible in a Year is an excellent resource for kids and parents to learn God's Word. Thank you for listening to Pray.com's Kids Bible in a Year. For more Bible stories and wisdom to last a lifetime, download the Pray.com app for free today. Thanks for listening to Kids Bible in a Year. I want to invite our adult listeners to check out my other show, Unapologetic, God's Truth on Today's Topics. It's unfiltered, important, inspiring, and it helps you have conversations that support you in having bold faith in a broken world. You will be empowered, excited, and inspired in your faith. I'm so excited for you to join me for Unapologetic weekly, wherever you get your podcasts.